the meantime, I think I might get Stephen to start off with the slide impacts, uh, the slides that show the impacts that have already happened here in your community. Good evening. Um, I'm just going to do a little ten-minute slideshow on what has happened on the site of Coal World. Coal World. Core actually is, uh, means dragon in Chinese, so it's like Dragon World. So it's yeah. So I'm just going to do a little presentation, ten-minute slideshow on what has happened on the site thus far of the Coal World property. Yeah, so the way I got involved with this campaign, Kathy mentioned to me about it one and a half years ago, we've heard there's a dam being built over on the Barnwell site. We don't know too much about it. We've heard that neighbours have been complaining a bit of, about machinery and loud noises. And at that stage, I just bought a drone. I thought, well, this is a good opportunity just to see what's going on. Um, I'd never heard of Barnwell before that point. Never heard of Kerwell. So I flew the drone over and I was faced with this and it just blew me away. A three acre dam on the property, um, obviously um, very ad hoc. And downstream there's a seasonal creek which is um, habitat for the Coranda tree frog. And uh, I quickly got these photos over to Cathy and that's how my involvement in the campaign started. Purely from seeing what has been happening on this, what was happening on the site the destruction and the clearing. Yeah, yeah so this is another angle of the site. <clears throat> um, this is the old Barnwell homestead. Um, there was some, a big amphitheatre that had been carved in. This is the dam from a different perspective. You can see the dam wall. This big excavation work had been put in. And then just after a bit of rain, I walked up the creek below the dam, the seasonal, the seasonal creek. And this is what I was faced with. So a lot of sedimentation, obviously some lining had been put down in the creek. Um, I thought it was all ineffectual. Yes. Uh, so a lot of sediment actually did flow right down in this rain event and go into the Owen Creek. The dam was built, after we got the photos of the dam, we submitted those photos to council. They knew nothing about it. We were even trying to council quickly put in a retrospective approval for the dam. And, uh, and that was it. And it was only because of the community that the council were pushed hard to try to get the dam built to standard. So it had to be rebuilt and, and built to standard. That's the sediment that's come down the creek. And this creek has now been, has now scientifically proven as being unviable for Coranda tree frog habitat and breeding. So this, this used to be a, a rocky, stony bottom creek. It's now just full of silt. So that's the back of the dam wall. <clears throat> uh, council had never seen that. That was just... Yeah, so. Yeah, so you can see the amount of material that was just leaching out of the dam wall. Yeah. That's a barbed wire fence to keep the cows in. <laughs> that's downstream. Yes, yeah, so hundreds and hundreds of metres downstream were filled with silt. Yeah, so after seeing the photos of the dam, I sort of got involved with the campaign that I, you know, uh, many local members of the community had, you know, knew more about it than me, obviously, and uh, I got involved, and, and then I sort of saw the whole scale of the, the development. So the area in red is the complete land holdings for, for Ken Lee. Um, and he's purchased that property under his business name called Reaver and Ocean Proprietary Limited. So you can see that's a huge area of Coranda, 650 hectares in size. And you can see how, you know, it's connectivity to existing national parks, state forests and reserves. Now you can see the clearing that occurred. So he, when Ken Lee Perth first purchased the property in 2014, there was a little bit of clearing that had occurred. Um, you can see that the new clearing that's gone on all through here and up through here compared to how it was. The green dots indicate where the Wyola tree frog have been found on the property, and the blue dots indicate where the, the endangered Wyola palm are found on the property. 
So the clearing proceeded again with no um, with no approvals. It was neighbours that complained to council and to residents, and it was the residents who who uh, got the, the federal agency to go and investigate, and there was a stop work order put on place, and uh, and then the developer then had to get the vegetation assessed and, uh, and mapped. Yeah, so you can see the scale of the clearing that's happened so far. And then you can see the overlay, this is one of the first concept plans for Kerr World. But it's very deceiving because a lot of this would have to be cleared for a golf course. So everything that they've been giving us is very deceiving, it's very ambiguous, it's very washy, wishy. If you put the golf, lay the golf course over the first concept plan, you can see the golf course going straight over Owen Creek and the complete riparian zone being bulldozed. If you look at the YouTube videos for Kerr World, it's pretty much all cleared. Um, and there's, it's, uh, there's, there's no visible sign of any rainforest left really on the entire site. Now we can see the extent of the clearing. So this has all been cleared in here. You can see all the, the patchy areas of clearing. Uh, Waddle, Waddle Drive is just up the back here. Yeah, so this, this is all the clearing in through here, all that and all up through there. Um, he was able to get away with this much clearing under the Campbell Newman vegetation laws. So under the Campbell Newman legislation, he was able to get away with the clearing um, because it was uh, technically revegetated uh, forest type, even though it was a very good revenge. Uh, it was about 40 years of regrowth. So these were just taken a few months ago on the creek, downstream of the dam. Yeah, so, so Tree fogs have got no chance in this creek. The other thing, because of the pressure of the local community, the, the proponent had to get the dam built to engineering standards, so it's actually rebuilt, and that involved dumping uh, rocks on the lee side of the dam wall, so that's now what the dam wall looks like. So it was all done by stealth, you know, the whole thing from day one has been done by stealth. The clearing of the rainforest, the building of the dam. So it doesn't put this proponent in good steed when he, when he wants to propose a so-called eco-resort. <clears throat> um, this is one of the Myola palms downstream from the dam site. <clears throat> and this is the, the latest reincarnation that we as a community found out about yesterday. This is the latest, ma latest master plan. Again, it's very wishy-washy. You can't see really where the golf course is. You can't see where roads are connecting over Owen Creek. We now assume that one of the major roads coming in will be Warrell Drive. Um, you know, so these, these concept plans are changing weekly. We don't know really what they're doing. And then what has happened recently, you might have read about this in the paper, the proponent has put in another submission under the table, we call it the Plan B submission in case Kerwald falls over in the EIS process. Ken Lee has also submitted a Plan B option to subdivide the hell out of the land um, anyway. So we can sort of see his real motivation here is, is, a, is a, as a real estate speculator um, to maximise his profits out of a cheap piece of rural land. So yeah, thank you.
think you must all agree with me. If we hadn't told you that was a proposed development that was going on for Kerr World as an eco-resort, and somebody showed you those photos and gave you no details on them, what would you presume those photos were of? Look like a mine site, doesn't it? Mm. Now, I've got to admit, they're confronting photos and they'll probably make us all... We have, you know, huge issues to deal with here.